for this last video four days left of august and i'm going to just regale you with a whole bunch of busyness it is unorganized it is all over the place and we were just putting things away as and when we could and doing what we could so stick with me till the end as we show you just what we achieved for the month of august in 2024 all right guys this is the last video the final episode of the 2024 every bit counts challenge funny thing still no tomatoes a few cherry tomatoes here a few san marzanos there but nothing to can so we were definitely restricted and had to get creative with canning something or putting stuff away every day and surprisingly we're starting off with something different for this video our noodle beans they are growing like mad it is my favorite part of the garden this beautiful trellis of noodle beans and it is so prolific that's one of the things we love about noodle beans they're always later in the season than our other beans you can see here our other beans are all dead and going to be dry beans to be collected next month and it's nice to have this bumper crop of beans for later use but for today we're going to be harvesting and chopping them up to get them into the freezer so that we have them over those winter months we also can come back to them once they're in the freezer and use them for some canning things once we finally have tomatoes. <laughs> we definitely have some here that have already gotten ahead of me, but that's okay because we're gonna also be talking about today seed saving because that is another very important part of the August and every bit counts. And you can see here some of my lettuce mm. just about ready to harvest. So as you can see, first harvest that's a lot of beans i'm curious i might actually weigh this once i got it cut up because that's a lot and as you can see behind me there's still tons more now i know someone's probably going to ask me so on each side of this trellis i planted 12 beans so 24 beans gives me that full archway and pounds and pounds of noodle beans the one thing i do say about these though is you can't you could but the dried bean is not very useful. So they are kind of a single purpose bean as compared to our other ones where, as you saw it earlier, they've all died back and we're letting them dry so that we can keep them for dried beans for use over the winter time in like baked beans and stuff like that or chili. So single purpose, but worth it for sure. So as I mentioned, seed saving is a huge part for us in the months of late August and into September. A lot of things we allow them to go to seed so that we have those seeds for next year. And in the greenhouse here is something that I just pulled up. Hopefully I don't lose all the seeds. We're just gonna lift it all up. Whoosh. So here we have our outrageous lettuce. This was a beautiful, beautiful lettuce. And as you can see, I have more seeds than I will ever, ever use off of this. But each one of those little pods has seeds in it. And we're going to harvest those before they get too cold or it gets too uh, humid or, you know, they're basically perfect right now for harvesting. So we're going to do that. So I said I was going to weigh the beans when we came in so that I had an idea of what we had. So we ended up, we chopped them all up and separated them and it's a little bit over two and a half pounds in each of these. So that's five pounds. Plus I separated a whole bunch to give to my friend Ange tomorrow and we had them for dinner. So I'm betting that we probably would have had close to six pounds of beans already picked for our first pick from the noodle beans. Oh, oh, wait, wait. And, and I picked some tomatoes. Not many, but I picked some. Well guys, once again, we are back at the blackberry patch. The mosquitoes are crazy. So I don't know how long I'm gonna last, but I really wanted to get some more because I am so, so impressed with my juicer. And I thought, you know what? If there is enough, I will juice at least another batch. It's looking like slim pickings. I think we're almost to the end of it now. Oh, the mosquitoes. But I'm gonna see what I can do. Not gonna bore you with the details, but just letting you know what I'm doing because I'm documenting my life. <laughs> All right, the mosquitoes got the best of me at the back and I did not keep going with the berries. I got about half a tub. And then I came up here and I had the best of intentions of harvesting my peppers. And then I heard the sounds from these trees behind me. I'm gonna dip down to give you a view of just how tall these trees are. So they go all the way up, <laughs> I can just see my head. So these trees go all the way along our property line and they are shag bark hickory trees. And look what I got. Look, 
Whoops, I got you all crooked. Oh, now I can't battle the mosquitoes. Look, hickory nuts. So I'm not going to stand out here in the mosquitoes and tell you about it, but we will revisit this. And as I come around the corner of my San Marzano tomatoes, there's my wonderful man. And he is harvesting those peppers that I originally wanted to harvest. Not a lot of them ready yet, but uh, definitely a lot more coming. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it sounds like fall. The trees back here are full of blackbirds and it just sounds like fall to me. And it's not September yet, so it's coming early it seems. But we're going back again. We're going to tackle it. Hopefully there's no mosquitoes today. But it was still awesome getting all of those hickory nuts yesterday. Those are something that totally did not come at all last year. And they are a great asset to put into the freezer. Now I know you're not going to see in every bit counts how we process those nuts because it really won't happen until I have enough collected. But I'm going to link above, and I will remember to do this, the video for our other channel, Hickory Croft Farm, where we went through the process two years ago on collecting and harvesting and processing those nuts to get them into the freezer for storage. And it really is a great process and I am so, so happy that this year we uh, have some back again because I was down to my last jar or container in the freezer. So they're great for pesto, great for baking, so many things and we have tons of them right here on the farm. But that's not what we're up to today. Today we're heading back to those blackberries and I even brought a big five gallon bucket just in case I can find some apples that are ready because I really, really want to steam juice some apples to see if that's potential for me for going into the juicing apple season. So keep your fingers crossed that we find some apples as well. But first we're going for those blackberries because I know that'll work and I know there's enough there. So I made the executive decision to do apples first because they'll keep a little bit longer. This tree behind me, you can see there's a couple still on it. It was a really, really good tree, very tasty, but I'm late. And the sheep have eaten most of what I could find off the ground. So I'm going to give it a shake and get a few. But then we're going to have to move on and see if there's a different tree to fill our bucket. Look at these that I just found. Haven't tried one yet, but I'm going to say they're probably tasty. They're a bit soft because they're very ripe. But they taste a little bit like a golden delicious. Very nice. Going to juice those. I'm excited. Okay, the mosquitoes are still pretty bad. I just found another tree. These are amazing. Mm. perfect juice apples so I'm going to have to come back with another bucket but look what's happening they're all on the ground everywhere but look the tree is still loaded absolutely loaded so I'm going to bring another 5 gallon bucket my juicer says 10 pounds is a batch and that'll make about 3 liters of juice my 25 gallon bucket holds Sorry, my five gallon bucket holds roughly about 25 pounds of apples, but um, that's before I core and everything them. So these are so good. I've eaten so many apples since I got out here. It's crazy. Not good for the diabetes after I just talked about in the last video how sweet apples were, but there's fiber in there too. I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna pick what I can here. I'm gonna come back with a bucket and see, because I can only process so much at a time and I don't want to waste them, but we're gonna get what's decent off the ground before the sheep come. Well, I barely even made a dent as to what was out there, but my bucket is full. So I'm going to leave it there for the moment. I'm gonna go pick my blackberries. I'm gonna take that in, get it, the blackberries into the juicer, maybe see if Chris will watch those, and then I'll come out and pick another bucket of apples because there's so many under that tree. And it looks like tomorrow we're gonna to be making apple juice. I'm actually really excited about this juicer. Honestly, Chris used it to make his lizard food the other, last night and it made so much. We could put so much into the steamer. It was crazy. So certainly worth the investment. Thank you everybody for the wonderful advice on that. All right, so I almost have a bucket picked of berries and I've made a call for reinforcements because all the apples are falling on the ground. All of them. So reinforcements came, still lots of apples on the ground, but we've got three buckets filled and I've eaten a lot of apples. These are by far the best apples that we have, I think. But the one thing I will say is they're always early. Hence right now, way too hot to press juice outside. The wasps will come, it'll be horrible. 
But now, this juicer is going to change the game. I just know it. Mm. I'm so excited. I probably will keep some of these in the fridge because they're too nice, but... All right, so we managed to survive the mosquitoes, but with all those apples that we managed to collect, I only got one bucket of blackberries. So add that to the half bucket that I got yesterday. It's not really enough to do the juice right now. So I'm gonna get these in the freezer, do the same thing we always do, flash freeze them, get them in a bag. I'll probably later on in the year, bring a bunch out and do another round of the juice with the blackberries. But for now, we're gonna put those in because with 75 pounds of apples, we're gonna get the juicer up here and start juicing the apples. Look at that guys. Gorgeous apples, ready for preserving. My new juicer, ready for juicing. All right, so we are going to start working on these apples. It's getting later at night, but I'm really hoping I can at least run a full thingy through. I'm going to take some suggestions from uh, my audience, and I'm going to put a smaller table down here and just run into my big pot because we're going to come back to this tomorrow to can it up for the apple juice because I'll be honest, I really don't want to wait for this and then do canning and wait for the, you know, it's just, it's getting late at night. So we're just going to get some juice to get a head start because with 75 pounds of apples, we've got a lot of juicing to do. I might make some applesauce, we'll see, because some of these are pretty nice and I'm definitely going to take some of the nicer ones and put them in the fridge for longer term keeping because the kids' school starts next week. Hard to believe. So... Let's chop them in half. That's all I'm gonna do, I think. I think breaking them open might speed the process a little bit, at least that's what I'm hoping, and uh, maybe let me get more into the little canister that holds everything. So, let's go. And once again, while I am hard at work with the apples, Christopher is working hard, chopping up more peppers from the garden. The pepper production has gone crazy. Good this year. All right, so we are working away on our hickory nuts that we collected the other day. I know this video has been all over the place. I'm trying to wrap up so many things for you guys in four days, and it's really not coming together well. But bear with me because coming into September, we're going to keep going with all this because, as you know, my tomatoes are not out yet. But what we need to do is get as many of these out of the shell as we can, and most of them aren't ready and get them into the oven to roast. They don't taste anything fantastic. They just taste like a normal nut right now because they're raw. But once you roast them, these hickory nuts taste just like toasted pecans. They're amazing. And we've almost got enough in our bowl now that we're gonna pop them into the oven and roast them away. So our oven is almost up to temperature. We're gonna roast these nuts 350 for 10 minutes and then basically let them cool and they're gonna get packaged up to go into the freezer. This is a great way to preserve these nuts for future use throughout the winter months. Or if I decide to make some pesto a little bit later with all that basil that's still out in the garden, but we just kind of make them, I break them into at least the halves so that they're not uh, too big. And then we just kind of gauge it. If they're looking like they need a little longer than that 10 minutes, we do that. But otherwise, this is great. They're gonna taste like toasted pecans, absolutely fantastic and it's free. So due to the fact that we're trying to wrap up a lot of things that went on in four days and didn't get completed because that's how life goes on the homestead and we had a few farm projects that needed to get done so cooking kind of got bumped but I want to come back to that apple juice that I was doing in my steamer and I want to touch on the fact that I'm gonna link another video and I really really hope I remember to come back and link all these videos on our Hickory Crook channel, we show how we usually oven to temperature for those nuts. It always happens when I'm in the middle of talking, the thing has to sing and there's no way to shut it off. And I'll be in the middle of a thought and then the thought will go and then I'll have trouble all regrouping. Okay, so what was I talking about? The, the video I'm gonna link for Hickory Croft, we usually in the fall press all of our apple juice through a outdoor press it's a whole process. We have a video. I will link it. And I was really, 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 really hoping that this steam juicer was going to give me the same product. But unfortunately, it didn't taste the same as that fresh pressed juice. Anybody who's made cider or something like that knows what I'm talking about. When you heat 
the apple juice to a certain temperature, the flavor changes and it no longer tastes like that delicious juice. And that's what we got out of the steam juicer. And that's the kind of apple juice that I just don't love for drinking purposes. So what we got is not going to be a waste. And I'm going to taste test it again one more time on video just to make sure I it hasn't miraculously changed flavor, right? It could have. Who knows? It sat for a day now. But we're going to make this into some apple syrup, hopefully low sugar. I haven't experimented with that. And if that doesn't work, we're going to make some apple jelly. So it's not going to go to waste. And we still have a whole bunch more apples, which I'm thinking I'm going to turn into applesauce. So as you can see, September is going to be a continuation of every bit counts in the sense that we are still preserving, still putting stuff away every day as much as we can. So I'm going to do a taste test. And then the moment you've all been waiting for is coming. We're going to talk about everything that we put away this month. So here comes the moment of truth. It's chilled now. It's had a day to rest. I'm really hoping it might taste like the apple juice I was hoping for, but let's see. Nope. Still tastes like cider. So a version of cider. It doesn't taste like cider, but it doesn't taste like my fresh apple juice. So I'm not going to carry on about this anymore. We're just going to take this product. It's still useful and we're going to still tuck it away as something to use over the winter months. So here it is, guys. This is what we've managed to can up for the month of August. I will admit I have done better in previous years, but I am still super impressed with this. In total, we had put away 126 jars of food. That's only the canned jars. You saw us put away a whole bunch of frozen stuff as well as all these herbs, which I'm going to go through in a little bit. But first, we're going to go through the numbers on what I put away as far as canned kind of ready meals, jams, jellies, that sort of stuff. Okay, so the big one, of course, on this table right now is the August stew. Now, you guys saw the August stew in probably half of my videos. I think we ended up doing five batches in total, 54 jars put away. And like I'd mentioned before, still had about 12 jars in the pantry. So putting us in at around 70 is good. That's more than a jar a week. And in the summertime, we don't consume it as much. So it doesn't have to go every single week, right? Super pleased with those. Next on the agenda here is our taco meat. This has been such a hit with the family and I put those few containers in the freezer because remember I didn't have enough jars and room in my canner and it's gone, already gone. I'm definitely gonna be coming back and putting some more of this away before winter sets in for sure. I'm gonna skip the middle section here because that's herbs and we're gonna come back to that. Pickles, this is the first year in probably ever that I've had as many pickles as I did and we put 14 jars away. So super pleased with that. That should last us for, well, with Alex, maybe two months. <laughs> what else do we put away? Marinated peppers. This is something that we love. We love to put on sandwiches, burgers, things like that, but we don't use as much anymore now that we don't eat those kind of things. So five jars is all I put away, but I still have three or four from last year. So I think that will suffice. Garlic pasta sauce. Again, same scenario. I only did five jars because I really don't need a lot of pasta sauce and my tomatoes are just starting to kick it now. So you'll be seeing some marinara coming up, but otherwise we're going to have to get creative with those tomatoes. Raspberry syrup. Super pleased with this one because it actually turned out like syrup. You saw us put it there on our Dutch baby pancakes and it poured out beautifully, which is exactly what I was going for. And we have eight jars of that. So that is super spectacular. And I'm going to say, yes, I have. <laughs> You'll be able to see this because we're going to zoom in right now on a shot. But that's my syrup. And as you can see, it does not look like syrup. So technically, I'm going to say it. We made eight jars of blackberry jelly. I don't know if there's really any syrup involved in this, but I'm going to come back to it. I've got a lot of berries in the freezer and there's still berries to pick. So I'm going to try again and see if we can get success. So stay tuned to see if that happens. And last but not least for canned stuff on this table is our lamb and black bean chili. Huge hit. If you haven't had a chance to see that video, make sure you go back through the Every Bit Counts videos and find one that has the recipe because it is a fantastic chili and you don't have to have lamb. You can use beef in it and it turns out just as amazing. So certainly give it a try. But all in all, 126 jars in total for this year so far. I'm going to look at my cheat sheet. Just give me one sec. I was trying to keep it out of sight. So 
283 jars. Today is September 1st and we have 283 jars already canned up for this season to add to what's still remaining from last year. So I think we're well on our way to being prepared for the winter months. Now let's go through the herbs because this is the part I'm actually really excited about because we did really well on the herbs this year compared to previous every bit counts. I always lacked in herb collection and this year because I had no tomatoes we collected a lot of herbs. So as far as the herbs go I'm not even sure where to start we just harvested so many different things we are so blessed to have so many different herbs whether they're forageable or things that we planted around the homestead. You saw us harvesting mint we got almost two liters of mint already, and it's still going very, very strong out there. But not only did we get almost two liters of the regular mint, we also harvested one and a bit of our chocolate mint, and there is so much more of this out there. Super excited, and I do promise there will be a garden tour, hopefully for this weekend, as long as the weather holds for me to film it, and uh, you'll see just how much mint and things we have going on. Those were our really, really big ticket items. And of course, catnip. I mean, with five cats, you need a lot of catnip. So this should keep them, hopefully, for at least the year. I'm not gonna go through every single item. We also did the lemon balm, the bee balm, stinging nettles, um, what else do we have? Basil, oregano, a little bit of summer savory, which was not too bad. And I will be honest, there's only two things that I really feel at this point pressed. To get more of i know we will need more of them we're going to harvest more mint because we love our teas but parsley nope that's stinging nettle wrong jar. stevia parsley and stevia these two items we go through a lot and that is all i have so far and as i've mentioned and as i've mentioned in numerous videos we're already using stevia out of these jars so we need to harvest a lot more and get creative with that because it has become such a staple for us. So definitely make sure you're riding me. Remind me, have you been harvesting that stevia? Because I need to have at least three jars, I'm going to say. Last year we had two liters and we went through it all. So on that note, oh, 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 lemon pepper. We also made that lemon pepper with that jackpot that I got at the grocery store for $2 for all those lemons and even made use of the lemons after, which often doesn't happen with me. <laughs> so I think I can wrap this Every Bit Counts challenge up. No, you can't. I was just about to wrap this video up when Chris pointed out that I had forgot to mention some pretty big ticket items. 24 pounds of peppers already in the freezer, 12 bags. That is so exciting because that was my goal this year. I am not buying peppers in the off season and hopefully this year we'll make it. The bushes, or are they bushes? The plants out in the garden are still pumping them out. So we're swimming in peppers. I'm gonna have to get creative. I'm even gonna take them and try and chop them up and make hot peppers out of them with a little bit of spice in the brine. Anyway, stay tuned and I'll let you know how well that goes. But. We put the peppers away and we've done 12 pounds of beans already cut up between the green, the yellow, and now those noodle beans that are just coming into their own right now. We still have bags and bags of those, I'm sure, to come in. So vegetables have really gotten underway in the freezer and fruit. Not only in the freezer, but elderberries. Almost a whole liter of dehydrated elderberries. These are gonna be so great for medicinal reasons, for helping us fight those colds and flus in the winter time. Teas, gonna make sure we're mixing them in there. We're gonna use these this year. We're not just gonna let them sit on the shelf, right? So that went in and all those blackberries, a little bit of blueberries, not too much because we were kind of hitting the end of it by the time August came around, but definitely on the blackberry front, we put four huge freezer bags into the freezer. Plus we're still collecting and still making jams and jellies. So. I don't know. I have no idea where this is going in September. I'm going to put a little clip in here right now of my tomatoes. They are just starting. You can see these gorgeous red ones on here and they're huge and looking lovely. And I'm a little concerned because I think they're all going to ripen really, really, really fast, which means I got to get my butt in gear and start making something out of those. So as you know, freezer space isn't a premium, so no tomatoes in the freezer if I can help it. But as you can see, we have had a productive month and 
every bit does count. As Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead has said time and time again, every bit counts. That little bit going away every day does make a difference. And I thank her again for always putting on this wonderful collaboration. It is such an opportunity for all us content producers and it is a great way to keep us all motivated and going and striving towards that resilience or use of what we have put so much effort into growing. So without any further ado, we're gonna wrap up Every Bit Counts for 2024 and we're gonna already start planning for next year because that's how I roll. Oh, and wait a minute. Hold tight for one second. I have something to share with you. So, in the process of wrapping up this video, I forgot about the nuts in the oven and almost burnt them, but they still taste amazing. So we're gonna get these packaged up into the freezer and that's the last bit where every bit counts for 2024.